people who use drugs are routinely subject to multiple human rights violations. An ambulance refuses to respond to a drug overdose because the underlying activity is illegal. Drug users die in locked hospital wards. Police beat people suspected of using drugs. Investigators force drug suspects into unmedicated withdrawal to extract confes confessions. People who use drugs are imprisoned on criminal charges without a fair trial. Drug users are committed to false treatment or detoxification without their consent. Doctors disclose patients' history of drug use without consent. Police raid the home of a suspect, suspected drug user without lawful authorization. Drug users are denied information about HIV prevention, harm reduction and safer drug use. Governments ban publications about drug use or harm reduction. Government officials harass individuals who speak publicly in favour of needle exchange, methadone or other harm reduction measures. Non-governmental organisations are compelled to oppose harm reduction as a condition of government funding for work on HIV prevention. Public authorities refuse to register a drug user association. Police break up peaceful demonstration, demonstrations against drug laws. Police fail to investigate a case of domestic violence against a drug using woman. Police fail to investigate the assault or the murder of a person suspected of using drugs, blaming it on gang violence. A person is denied health care due to actual drug use or suspected drug use. People who use drugs are underrepresented in HIV treatment programs despite accounting for a majority of people living with HIV. Government officials ban needle exchange programs. Government officials ban substitution therapy with methadone. Women are denied access to harm reduction services on an equal basis with men. Young people who use drugs are denied factual information and services about safer injection and harm reduction. Drawn from every region of the world, the human rights indictment is long. And this, of course, is not the end of it. From your own experiences, you can all provide many additional examples. This widespread systemic abuse of human rights is especially shocking because drug users include people who are the most vulnerable, the most marginal in society. Despite this, Despite the scale of the abuse, despite the vulnerability, there is no public outrage, no public outcry, no public inquiries. On the contrary, the long litany of abuse scarcely attracts disapproval. Sometimes it even receives some public support. Why? Because it seems to me, in many societies, people who use drugs are invisible, stigmatized, or demonized. And history teaches us that when this happens, when a group of people are rendered invisible, stigmatized, or demonized, when that happens, widespread human rights abuse often follows. This, it seems to me, is precisely what is happening to people who use drugs in many countries. Governments suffer from acute amnesia. I talked to them in the UN Human Rights Council about the right to the highest attainable standard of health. The Council passes resolutions affirming the right to health. 
resolutions requesting me to prepare more reports on various aspects of the right to health. And then the same governments that sit in the UN Human Rights Council, they walk up the hill in Geneva to the World Health Organization, or they take a plane to Vienna and the UN Commission on Narcotic Drugs, and somewhere en route they forget about their binding legal right to health obligations. This is especially bizarre because the United Nations General Assembly has expressly mandated the UN Human Rights Council to take steps to integrate human rights across the world organization. And this leads to the inexcusable situation that the UN Commission on Narcotic Drugs focuses on the three international drug conventions with scant regard for the International Code of Human Rights that emerges from one of the Article 1 objectives of the United Nations Charter. It is imperative that the international drug control system, the UN Commission on Narcotic Drugs, the UN Office on Drugs and Crime, the International Narcotics Control Board, and so forth and so on, it's imperative that this drug control system and the complex international human rights system that has evolved since 1948, they must cease to behave as though they operate in parallel universes.